Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust you are feeling blessed in Jesus this morning and walking in the spirit, the joy, the peace, and the love of the great God whom we serve. Today is October the 20th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, we are continuing our look into the book of Job, and today we are in chapter 16. Job is going to reply to Eliphaz, and of course, the other two friends, Bildad and Zophar, and he continues to maintain his innocence. But he begins with a pretty strong rebuke. In, in verse 1, it says, Job answered and said, I've heard many such things. In other words, you guys are just telling me the same stuff over and over. And of course, that is what we see. The message doesn't change from them. They continue to state that Job must have sinned, and that's the only reason that this wrath could be upon him. He says in verse 3, shall vain words have an end? In other words, will you guys ever shut up? What has emboldened thee that you should answer such? In chapter 17, verse 10, he says, but as for you all, do you return and come now? For I cannot even find one wise man among you. Back to chapter 16, verse 4, he says, I could speak as you do. If your soul were in my soul's stead, I could heap words against you and I could shake my head at you. But that's not what I would do. I would strengthen you with my mouth. And the moving of my lips should assuage your grief. In other words, Job is saying to his friends, if you were in my place, I would speak words of blessing to you. I would encourage you. I would even pray for you. I would comfort you in your time of grief. I wouldn't increase your grief by speaking words of discouragement. He says in verse 16, my face is foul with weeping and on my eyelids is the shadow of death, but not for any injustice in mine hands. My prayer is pure. In verse 19, he says, also now behold, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. So he remains constant in his own defense that what he is enduring isn't on behalf of some sin that he has committed. He says in verse 7, it is God who has made me weary. In verse 8, he has filled me with wrinkles. Verse 9, he teareth me in his wrath. He hates me. He gnashes upon me with his teeth. In verse 11, he's delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. Verse 12, he's broken me asunder. He has taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces. He sets me up for his mark. His archers compass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder and doth not spare. He poureth out all my gall upon the ground. He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. But again, verse 17, not for any injustice in mine hands. My prayer is pure. Now notice something very interesting here. Most people today, when something tragic is bestowed unto them, accuse Satan for the tragedy. But notice, Job doesn't do this. He understands all things come from the Most High, and even Satan himself answers to the Most High. So his judgment is coming from the Most High. I say that only to say this. We have to be very careful when we praise Satan. You see, praise isn't always for something good, Praise is just giving credit to someone for something that has been done. And so oftentimes when we, as the people of God, blame Satan, we're giving credit to him, undue credit, because nothing can be done unless the Lord Almighty allows it to be done. Think about that for a few moments. Allow that to settle in. Because Job doesn't blame or praise Satan for all these bad things that have happened to him, but instead he goes straight to the source and he says that it's from the Almighty's hands that these things are being accomplished. He then picks up chapter 17 and he says, My breath is corrupt, my days are extinct, the graves are ready for me. So he has resigned himself to death. 
it seems to Job that this is the only comfort, surely the only comforting thought that he has left to hold on to. He says in verse 11, my days are past, my purposes are broken off, even the thoughts of my heart. Verse 13, if I wait, the grave is mine house. I have made my bed in the darkness. I have said to corruption, thou art my father, to the worm, thou art my mother and my sister. And now where is my hope? As for my hope, who shall see it? They shall go down to the bars of the pit when our rest together is in the dust. Now we could basically say at this stage of the torment that Job is in, he has lost his mind. What I mean by that is he is not the same person that he was when this test began. His mind has drifted into a place that many would consider insanity. And if Job were like many people today who come to the end of their rope and they find no other reason to live, and Job were to take his own life because he could find no hope in his situation, would he be, as many proclaim today, lost? Would he be separated from God? And it is of my opinion that the answer would be no. In other words, I believe that there are many people who have committed suicide not being in their own right mind, and they will walk with us in the new kingdom. Because if they had been in their right mind, they never would have taken their life. But when they took their life, they were not in their right mind or they were insane. They had lost their sanity. Because if they had been sane, if they had been in their right mind, they never would have taken their own life. I simply add that as a thought to consider because I, of course, Job doesn't take his own life. But he has definitely reached a point in his mind where if he had even considered that as a possibility, he certainly would have done so. Well, Job ends his thoughts here in a place of despair. He's lost all hope of receiving any comfort from his friends. He's lost all hope of receiving any deliverance from his God. That's why he says in verse 15, where is now my hope? As for my hope, who shall see it? And he simply says, as he does in chapter 16, verse 21, oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleadeth for his neighbor. In other words, your words, my friends, are empty. So instead of speaking to me, won't you speak to God on my behalf? And that's the thought I want to leave you with today, friends. There are many who need your prayers. There are many who need you to speak to God on their behalf because they're either too foolish, too ignorant, or too stubborn to talk to God on their own. But your prayers can make a difference in their lives. So don't give up on your friends. Don't give up on your loved ones. Instead of going to them and trying to change them, simply speak to God on their behalf. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're again with us. I pray that your journey today will be full of blessing and joy and that you'll experience new things with your Lord Jesus that you've never experienced before. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you. I'll see you on the next video.